Hey folks, Scott Kelby here, and I've got a field report for you on the brand new Platy Ball. So it's a very revolutionary ball head brought to you by the people that made the Platypod. And I finally got a chance to shoot with one. I've seen them, I've gotten to hold one. I never really got to shoot with one, and now I have it. I thought I would give you guys the pros and cons, what I liked, what I didn't like, the whole nine yards, all right? So if you're not familiar with what a Platy Ball is, it is a Kickstarter project and they were hoping to raise $18,000 to be to build this. In about the last 45 days, they've almost raised 400,000, so it's been a huge hit, but we're coming down to the end of it. There's only got, I think, six days left from today, uh, which is Monday the 9th, so there's only like a few days left, but that's why I wanted to get this out now. So here's what the overall idea is if you're not familiar with it. They basically turned the ball head from being on the bottom to the top, they've turned it upside down, so basically, they've come up with an easier, more accurate way to control your camera on a tripod or on a platypod like this. All right, one of the things that's neat about it is because of the way they've done this, it kind of eliminates the need to level your, your tripod or your platypod. So they've got two different versions, and I'll talk about those, but the whole idea is to make this just easier to use, easier to level. Um, it's made of a forged aluminum body. It's got an ARCA compatible quick release clamp on top. In fact, it comes with a little release here if you want that you can put on like an I, like a iPhone or if you want to put a compact camera on, but it really is the standard ARCA type. Uh, control here on the top. All right, and to use it, you would just basically here. Let me remove the one from here real quick. There's a little uh, quick release button here, so you don't do it accidentally. So let's do that. It pops off this. So it's got like a I would call it a safety latch. You put your camera on there, and then it, you just dial it. You can hear it, and it locks in place, so it's not going to move at all. All right. Now, after you've done that. The big thing, I think, for me, as shooting landscapes, shooting cityscapes, architecture, all that stuff, there's a panning turntable right on the top of the unit. Why is that so important that it's on the top like that? Because it stays level when you're panning. No matter what you do, it stays level. So that's really nice. Once you've got the head leveled, it swivels. You don't wind up with those panos that go to the left or panos that go to the right. It's huge. People spend like $900 to get like pano heads and this kind of has one built on the top. So without the size or the cost of a pan tilt head, you've got this. Uh, the other thing about it is there's not a bunch of knobs. In fact, there are really no knobs. There are two large buttons and they work by you pr pressing them. So right now this thing's rock solid, right? So what you do is when you want to loosen it, you press the bottom button, press it a few times and it's as loose as you want it. When you want to tighten it, you press the top one and it gets just as tight as you want it. But here's the thing about this. When you tighten it, it does not move. It is the most accurate ball head you will ever try. If you've ever put your, your uh, camera on a ball head and it goes down just a little or it goes to the side or it tips over just a little, that happens to me all the time. Not with this bad boy, it is the most accurate. They say it's accurate to within 0.5%, so it's like crazy. Anyway, also by not having knobs and stuff sticking out, it's easier to store, you don't have you know junk when you're putting it in your, in your uh, camera bag or whatever, and there's no junk sticking out. It's very smooth, it's very nice. Now, there are two different models. The first model is this one right here, this gray one, which I particularly love. It's called the Ergo, all right? It's their, I would, I would call it their standard model, I don't know what they call it, but it's like a gunmetal gray. Uh, then there is an elite version. The elite version is this red one right here. So the red one is, uh, we call this Hilmar Smith Red. So it's like a, a Ferrari Red. And this is the kind of the more advanced model. It's called the Elite. And the thing that it has that's different is that in the very back of the camera, there's actually a leveling, an electronic leveler built right into it. So the electronic leveler allows you to actually and perfectly and precisely level your camera. So when you're on location, it brings up this little leveling device and you can get it absolutely perfectly level right here at the spot. So that's great. Also, you can do it day or night. You can even control the brightness. You can turn it up or turn it down. So that's a big thing. Now, a couple little minor things. The base is slotted. So if you want to put carry it on a carabiner, you can throw it from your backpack or your camera belt or whatever. Um, you do have to supply your own carabiner. It does not come with one. All right, there's that. Uh, it holds a ton of weight. It holds up to 22 pounds, which is probably more than you're ever going to put on one. It comes with a very nice neoprene protective jacket uh, with a slotted pocket for you to have an extra battery storage. That's only if you're using the Elite model, the one that has a little LED in the back. If you have that, then it has a place for an extra battery. Uh, it's weather sealed, so you don't have to worry about rain or snow or salt. 
Um, it's not really designed to be used underwater, even though it's weather sealed. So just keep in mind that it's rain, snow, salt spray, stuff like that. Uh, it's got a three year warranty, all that kind of stuff. You'd expect one year on the electronic module if you get the Elite model. All right, so, so here's what I found about it actually using it. There are some really, really great things. I think the best thing, so we'll do the pros first. The best thing is you can easily adjust it exactly the way you want it with just the right amount of tension. You feel like your camera is really, really secure, and that's a big thing. And that's that's no small thing, feeling that your camera is super secure, your tripod's secure, and it doesn't move. It's really, really accurate. The other thing is, and this is kind of one of their big things, was when you just have to use one hand, that is really, really nice. You don't have to have one hand on the other dial and one hand here and then hold it, try to hold your camera. It's very, very nice. So it's I would say it's a very, very easy one. Uh, the panning scheme is incredibly smooth, very, very nicely done. Uh, and I don't detect any lens creep or anything, no matter which way you use it. Very accurate, even with a large lens and body on it, no creep whatsoever. Uh, build quality, incredibly great build quality. It feels like a quality piece of equipment. You, know, you can tell that they didn't build this in a vacuum. You can tell that they talked to a lot of photographers, and by the way, me being one of them, telling them it needs to do this, it needs to do that, it's gotta have this, it's gotta have that, but it's not just me. They've run through a lot of photographers who've given their input, and, and it feels like it. It feels like this was not built in a lab, this was built out in the field, so that's really nice. If you get the Elite model, the electronic leveling is really helpful, um, and you can also calibrate it yourself, it's super easy. Another big pro is the price especially if you get it during the last Kickstarter days. You can get the Ergo for $199, which is a steal. Now, you know you can spend three, four, five hundred dollars on a pro quality ball head. This is $199 if you get it on the Kickstarter, or $249 if you want the Elite with the leveling device in it, the red one, right? Uh, you can get both, both an Ergo and one, this is if you're loose with money, for $3.99, you can get them both. Now, after the end of the Kickstarter thing, after March 15th, the prices go up 50 bucks each, so it's worth getting in on them now, and the first shipments are slated to go out in December. So what are the cons? Here are the cons. Number one, you absolutely need to read the manual. This is not one of those ones that you pick it up and go, oh, I got this. They kind of redesigned how ball heads work, so I would tell a friend, look, don't just pick it up and try to figure it out. Just go read the manual. It's only four pages. It's big type. You won't have any problem with it, but you need to read the manual. It's simple, but you got to read it. That's number one. Now, uh, number two, it's a little heavy. Like you'll feel it and you go, yeah, it's heavy. It feels great in your hand, but we did some research. It's really not really any heavier than any other high pro ball head. So if you get a pro ball head, they're always going to have that girth. They're always going to feel like, you know, it's a real, you know, it's a real piece of equipment. It feels like a real piece of equipment. The other one is more psychological than it is physical. It looks very tall. It looks tall, but if we put it up against some of our other pro ones and it's almost the same size. So it's almost the same weight and almost the same high as other pro ball heads but pro ball heads are heavy. So just keep all of those in mind. So those are just some things that are, that I really kind of stuck out to me. As far as the use goes, you will love the way it using it. And I've talked to a number of photographers who either saw it or held it. Uh, they've already shown it at uh, Imaging USA. They showed it at WPPI and everybody was loving it. And one of the things that everyone's impressed with is how, what a solid, well, built piece of equipment it is. So that's kind of nice. And of course, the people that do Plotty Pod, you know, they're, they are beloved in our industry because they deliver what they promise. So that's, it's gonna be great. I just wanna make sure that you get it at a decent price. So make sure you get it before March 15th. You can get it $199 for the gray one, $249 for the one that's red. There's only a few days to go and this is your, your opportunity. All right, so that's my good and bad. It's 99% good, 1%. Couple things you gotta do. Uh, read the manual, know that it's gonna be heavy. Oh, I got one more, I got one more con, I forgot. I really think they should throw in the carabiner. Don't you think if you're spending 199 and they built a thing for a carabiner, that they should throw a car, is it just me? They should throw in a carabiner. Anyway, that's the deal. Uh, I hope that you found this helpful. If you want to learn more, go to Platyball, or you can go to platypod.com, go to Platyball, or just go to Kickstarter and search for the Platyball, P-L-A-T-Y-B-A-L-L, -L, and get it before March 15th, because once that Kickstarter 
campaign is done. It's done and now you're paying full price. Thanks everybody, hope you found that helpful. We'll catch you next time.